really one of the most universally recognizable comedy characters in the world, with feature films, an animated series, and even an appearance in the Olympic opening ceremony. He is a global phenomenon, bringing his own peculiar brand of physical comedy to over 200 different countries, and they only ever made 14 episodes. We wanted to dedicate this video to the birth of Mr. Bean, to establish just how this oddball of a man has won his way into so many hearts around the world. This is the story of Mr. Bean. Hello, I'm Dr. Bean. <laughs> Let's start off with a look at the man behind the bean, Rowan Atkinson. He was born and raised in County Durham in Northeast England. He went to school with future British Prime Minister Tony Blair. Both would go on to become renowned around the world. One would gain fame for their bumbling buffoonery, whereas Rowan Atkinson ended up in comedy. Okay, 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 so that was an easy joke to make. But we're not going to pass up an open goal like that on this channel. Uh-uh. From school, he went to Newcastle University, where he earned a degree in electrical and electronic engineering. And then, in 1975, he went to continue his studies at the Queen's College, at the University of Oxford. This is where he met his future collaborator and co-writer of Mr. Bean, Richard Curtis. Atkinson was always very quiet, which is quite fitting when you think about it, and quite shy. So, it took friends like Richard Curtis to bring him out of his shell. It was at Oxford that he began dabbling with acting and comedy. He wrote and performed sketches for the Experimental Theatre Group and the Oxford Dramatic Society before joining the Oxford Review a famous comedy group that has featured so many comedy greats over the years, including Money Python members and Alan Bennett. Atkinson would gain national attention when the review performed at the Edinburgh Fringe Festival in 1976. And it was at this point that he turned his attention away from his doctorate and towards the serious world of professional acting. See the little goblin, see his little feet, and his little nosy woes, isn't the goblin sweet? Yes! The year is 1975, and a fresh-faced Rowan Atkinson is getting stuck into university life! Woo! He was asked to perform a sketch in a one-night show at the Oxford Playhouse, with 48 hours notice. He wasn't a writer, so the thought of writing a long monologue to say out loud terrified him. So, he did what any one of us would have done. He stood in front of his mirror and pulled some funny faces. And thus, Mr. Bean was born! There is far more to Mr. Bean than funny faces, of course. But that was the start of it. That was where he came from. A desperate student that had to come up with something, anything to do on stage in front of an audience. No words, no story as such, just a variety of facial expressions and a comedy legend is created. <sighs> There was around 15 years between those first twitches of facial muscles in front of a mirror and Mr. Bean first appearing on our television screens. An entire career had to be created first. After university, Rowan Atkinson launched himself into the world of comedy, first by appearing in the third edition of The Secret Policeman's Ball in June 1979 which was broadcast on the BBC and so earned him national recognition. And then, by being a prominent performer on the groundbreaking sketch show, Not the Nine O'Clock News, this is where Atkinson really caught the public's imagination. 
His place at the forefront of British comedy was cemented when he was cast in the title role of the mock history sitcom Black Adder. If you haven't seen Black Adder before, honestly, what on earth have you been doing? You need to watch it right now! Or at least once you've watched this video and the others in our back catalog. Black Adder was a very different role to Mr. Bean. He was devious, with a biting wit, and armed with an arsenal of one-liner put-downs. A proper anti-hero. Black Adder ran from 1983 to 1989, and by the end of the series, Rowan Atkinson was one of the most famous actors in the UK. His next project was eagerly anticipated. Atkinson had a cunning plan. Don't worry, Mr. B. I have a cunning plan to solve the problem. In 1987, Rowan Atkinson performed at the Just for Laughs Comedy Festival in Montreal, Canada. The festival is split into two. One is for English-speaking acts, and one is for French-speaking acts. Atkinson signed up for the French-speaking side. The organizers were confused. Surely it had to be a mistake. So they got in touch with him to rectify the error. But there wasn't a mistake. Atkinson wanted to test out his non-speaking character on a foreign-speaking audience. He wanted to see whether his brand of physical comedy would translate to an international stage. Atkinson had long been a fan of French comedy, citing Jacques Tati's character, Monsieur Hulot, as one of his inspirations and followed to T's mantra of comedy begins in the legs. A venue with a French-speaking audience seemed like the perfect place to try out this weird character of his. At this stage, Mr. Bean didn't have a name. Mr. Cauliflower was suggested, but thankfully he didn't settle on that. Instead, keeping with the vegetable theme, he went for Mr. Bean. It's one of the most perfect names in the history of comedy. It just works. In truth, Mr. Bean has been slowly constructed ever since those first funny faces in the mirror. If you look at any sketch or TV show that Rowan Atkinson has been in during the 80s, you can see little glimpses of Mr. Bean there. As Atkinson himself said, Villains are always more fun than good guys. It's a well-known fact, and I enjoy characters that have a vindictiveness in them, which explains the edge that Mr. Bean has about him. You see, for such a universally loved character, Mr. Bean is a bit of a dick, isn't he? He's selfish, mean, grumpy, and vindictive, but we love him. As television producer and longtime friend of Atkinson, John Lloyd puts it, there are two Rowan characters. Principally, there's the absolute bastard, who's the schoolmaster character or Black Adder. And then there's this funny, wibbly little man who is actually an utter bastard. They're both bastards. Atkinson himself sees Mr. Bean as an anarchist, but also a child trapped in a man's body. It's this unique combination of qualities that makes him so well-loved all over the world. We can both sympathize with his situation while being baffled and appalled at the decisions he makes. With the success of Blackadder behind him, and buoyed by the success of the wibbly bastard Mr. Bean in front of an international audience, Atkinson and his university friend Richard Curtis decided to bring Mr. Bean to television. The first episode, a pilot titled simply Mr. Bean, was first broadcast on New Year's Day 1990. This was the episode during which Mr. Bean attended a maths exam and tried to copy from a fellow student. And then he changes into his swimming trunks. It was watched by 13.45 million people on its first airing. Richard Curtis enlisted the help of Robin Driscoll for writing, 
and Driscoll would go on to appear in many episodes. Now, I know what you're thinking. How much writing is really needed for a silent comedy? But Mr. Bean would be nothing if he wasn't put in these various situations. They drop him in there and watch the magic happen. When describing the writing process, Curtis said, What I've always done on the Mr. Beans is the charcoal outline. And then Rowan adds all the color and the texture, and I get to laugh at him while he does it. Hmm, maybe you're right. Writing for Mr. Bean might just be one of the easiest gigs in comedy. You can't have a globally renowned comedy character that has been going for decades without running into a few issues. For one, the physical element of playing Mr. Bean has taken its toll on Rowan Atkinson. He remembers filming a scene for the 2007 film Mr. Bean's Holiday. There was a scene in which Mr. Bean overtakes a peloton of racing cyclists, seemingly without putting in any effort at all. It may have not taken anything out of Mr. Bean, but Rowan Atkinson recalls nearly killing himself to get up enough speed to overtake them and then to make it look like he wasn't trying. Then there was the risk to the crew. Back when they started making Mr. Bean, safety protocols were, shall we say, a little more relaxed than they are today. Atkinson remembers performing his own stunts while driving, saying how one time he was tasked with driving incredibly fast and then braking just before he hit the camera. And cameraman. Can you imagine the star of any show today being asked to perform those kind of stunts? Finally, one of the main drawbacks of being the only actor in a show that only has one very distinct character and is a global smash hit is that you tend to get recognized pretty much anywhere you go. At any time, Rowan Atkinson, a quiet and shy man, doesn't like the limelight. But maybe he should have thought of that before he created one of the most popular TV characters in the world. One time, though, he failed to get recognized. While waiting for car parts in the UK, a man there commented that he looked just like Mr. Bean. When Atkinson corrected him and pointed out that he was the actor that played Mr. Bean, the man simply didn't believe him, even going as far to say that he should consider look-alike work as he could earn serious money. The more Atkinson tried to convince him that he was Mr. Bean, the less the man would believe him. Would you recognize Mr. Bean if he was standing next to you? Thank you for watching our video on the birth of Mr. Bean. We hope you have enjoyed it. Please like and subscribe for more videos on the stories behind our comedy favorites.